Hey guys, today I wanted to have a few minutes just to walk you through um, a node I've just created for myself because I, I made it to help me make this GoPro and I thought it'd be super useful. Um, it's about tackling curved squares. So you see here we've got this kind of shape here. Let me show you in the top left here. So we've got this kind of shape here. Um, it's about tackling and how to create these in the best way possible. And um, I've got a little example over here on what I mean by that. So if we go up here, we have the more generic way of creating these shapes. So you start with a square, which is usually the case. You blur it and then you scan it and then you compensate. And by that, I mean you change the position. Obviously, that then changes this, how far down the blur it sets the white value to. And then you have to retransform it to get it back to the size you actually wanted it. Um, and it can be a bit finicky to get right. And it's not that friendly because every time you like mess with it you have to go back it's just it's just not good right so um it's very useful in the context that if i grab a polygon here and then chuck a polygon in let's change the scale of the polygon down it'll curve these edges really nice as well now this technique i'm about to show you doesn't work for them but it does work it, it's exclusively for squares but what i don't like is um, not only the fact that it's not very consistent how it does it, it's just there is, an, there is a point where the angle stops. Like, I can't make this go any further than that. Do you know what I mean? Whereas with this, if we look at that, this is my graph. I'll show you, I'll walk you through it in a minute. If we change the size of the curve, it stays in the same place. We can go all the way to a circle if we want. And um, we can change the scale and that doesn't affect this and we can just do it as tight it is really useful right very helpful piece of kit and as you can see the graph's not that complicated either so what i'm going to do is i'm going to walk you through um how to make it sorry if i sound a bit out of breath by the way i'm just the cold weather has knocked it out of me so yeah i'm going to um show you how to make this so if we jump over to an unsaved project which is this one and we create a shape this is basically the start of the tutorial, so I guess I'll have a timestamp showing how to, you know, just skip into this bit. Start by making two shapes, a disc and a square, and then exposing the size of one, and then linking it to the other ones. Then you've got two of these, right? And if it's not set to 0.5, just go down here and just give this a wiggle, just so both of them, they're not like, they're not set to one, right? They're just somewhere in the middle, which just makes it easier to work on. Next, it's tile sampler time. So we're just gonna grab a tile sampler here and we're gonna go X amount two, Y amount two, pattern input, pattern input number four, distribution pattern number, and then scale one. And we're gonna make a uniform color, set that to grayscale and white. We're gonna invert that and we're gonna plug that into four press D to dock it and then put the, the rest into three. And that's going to create us this shape here where we've got three white squares and then a black one. And what we can do with that is we can blend this with a multiply node. And what this will do is it'll basically cut that to the size of this. You could also do, um, you could plug that in the alpha like that and set it to copy. And that would also work either or. I personally like doing multiply just because to know i just did so that's nice we can do that and next we need to make a new blend node and we're going to add these and you'll notice because these are set to the same size when we add them together it will just curve this bottom corner and whenever we change that it will basically change the size of this shape now so let's quickly test that so if i move this we're just basically scaling this new shape right if you can make that shape another way crack on but um, you do need that size parameter to be able to continue. Um, right, so next up we're going to get a safe transform grayscale. Um, so we'll get that and plug that in there. And we'll get another one as well and we'll plug that in there. So this second one we're going to set to 0.5. Just like that. And then this one we are going to expose this as an empty function. We're going to get float and we're going to get the size 
and then we're going to get and um, we're going to just make a normal float sorry so float one and we're going to set this float one to two and then we're going to divide um, it's super important that you put the divide in b and the size in a um, don't mess that up because um, i did and it meant that i had to re-record this video because i was confused as to what was going on set this as an output node and then it's going to go all a bit weird but don't worry about that that's fine and then if we go into here that's going to align that bit magic right just it, it, it just works right it's a bit like um, bethesda games it just works so great now we're going to mirror grayscale um maybe i should explain what we're actually doing there so quickly mirror the corner and mirror bottom right and then we'll go back in and we'll change the scale a little bit just to give a bit better example as to what's going on here so with this shape, we're transforming it to the upper left quadrant of the the screen. Um, the issue we then have is we're moving it to the upper left quadrant, but the point is like there and we need to, sorry, the point of scale is there and we need to move that there, which is why we offset it by 0.5 to bring it back home. Because you see if I put this back to zero, it works out perfectly that 0.5 just brings us back. And then here the reason we're dividing the size by two is just because it works out that half the scale is um the offset amount you need to be able to put it in the top left um almost side of that pivot and then we can just kind of correct that later and that allows us to then mirror it perfectly and put these curved bits that we like in the corners so you can see now when we change this um, if you ignore the black sections in between, we're basically changing the size of that shape um, in the corners. We're just scaling that shape perfectly in that in those in those higher corners. So now we need to to fill in the gaps really, and then we're basically there. Super easy stuff. So we're going to shape, and we're going to we only care about the X, but we'll get to that in a sec. Transform. Do this one as 90 degrees and then we're gonna blend this and we're gonna add um oops add that so we're trying to make um we're basically gonna try and find the point around here somewhere usually i think it's around this pixel onwards where we're just gonna set it to white so we're just trying to ignore this quadrant of that quadrant do you know what i mean now an fx map is probably the best way of doing this but i'm not too familiar with them and this definitely works so i'm just happy it does um without using an fx map so let's create this so we need to go into size and we need to make an empty function as always we need to get our float which is our size and then we're going to do um subtraction and we're going to get a float again um, just a normal float this time i'm going to set that to one and we're going to chuck that in the bottom of subtract and the size into the top and then i'm going to do a vector float two and we're going to set last to one and we're going to set the top to that so that's us basically taking the size and then taking it away from one to basically work out what the difference is and then just plugging that in as the parameter and then we want um, the height to stay the same. And so we can just plug the one in there, which is really nice. And then set that as an output node. And we should have a nice tool here, which allows us to change the scale. And you can see the black here. That is the, the area that is curving. So you see that? The area that's being um, obtained by the, the, the sphere. Of the, the circle should i say that's that area there so next we can scale that and then we can change this and you can see that changes in accordance with that so then as, as you may have guessed it's all right on these higher ones because it kind of does it itself but when you get lower obviously the gap appears so you, this needs to come in so when we do that we just chuck an add-on onto it and then that should perfectly add that without causing any problems in the corners, which it doesn't. And then it's as simple as adding a tile generator. Um, you could use a transform node, but I like this. Um, use one, one, pattern input, 
um, set that to pattern input and then everything seems fine expose the scale and we will do that as scale overall set that to that and then output node and then what we can do is we can just go tidy this up remove the group and um, this is scale overall so we just call that scale and then we can change the original size that we've been referencing the whole time to curve and if we go in give this a little test now we can change the curve and we can change the size which is really neat really helpful um i hope you guys learned something really simple set of nodes that just interact with each other really well i, I can't think of many nodes here that are um you know could be optimized maybe this system here could be optimized maybe this system at the start could be optimized and um, you might even be able to get away with not having the square since you're placing the circle in the right spot um i guess we could just remove that to see if we end up with the same result and if, if this is the case then i've learned something here and we've just optimized the graph even further um let's just test um because it might be that later on yeah we might have just done that so there you go we've actually managed to improve it there just at the end so i didn't even need that so this whole section here is is irrelevant you don't need it we can because i thought this um because this is working so well this this shape subtraction here we only need to place the circles in the top corner at all time and the same um same applies but because circles are kind of hard to visualize the corners of it's kind of hard to eyeball that so it was still useful for the making process to see the rest of that but for the output i guess you don't need it so there we go we've actually managed to shorten it load so there we go you could probably go even further you could probably tidy this up if you were really nice with you might even be able to um let's go into here just have a little bonus section here um let's do add and then this might not work by the way stop stop following if um if you're not interested this is just me tinkering now and um, you might be able to go in and just do that and then you might not need the use of that no i don't i think we've managed to make it even shorter so there we go this is really good again this is useful though because you guys have seen the workflow and you can see how it gets optimized as well so we've managed to cut another node out there so really neat i could go on all day i might see how low i can get this in the end you but might even be able to to do it all within one node here but um i think that's all we have time for there today and i think i hope you guys have learned something i'm sorry i wasted your time by making you make loads of extra nodes but i think the um the result here at the very end is, uh, has been pretty 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 cool actually so yeah thanks for um thanks for listening i do appreciate your time and um hopefully i'll catch you soon